Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, where the truth of Genesis is unleashed. And we ask the question, which is better, revelation or reason? There will always be people who become impressed by creation arguments for a while, then they later hear a, an equally impressively sounding evolutionary argument. They switch right. back and forth. Yep. Uh, you know, then maybe they go see another creation scientist that impresses them. They counter the evolutionist argument successfully, and then they switch back and, and so on. Right. right. Dr. Carl Whelan once related how at a Creation Ministries International lecture a yeah. long, long time ago, a man in the audience said that he had become convinced that God created recently by an argument that he'd heard about the evidence for a shrinking sun. Right. <laughs> Years ago, that was an argument. Which, and that seemed to indicate that the sun was young. Now, as a result, he began to trust the Bible completely, Carl related, and was happy with his newfound faith until a minister convinced him that the argument had problems. He said there was no evidence for the long-term shrinkage of the sun so this man lost his professed faith. <laughs> now, Carl also noted that uh, a cautious review of the data indicated that the best conclusion on the basis of all the evidence was that the sun probably is still shrinking, right. less than the original measurements, but, but still too rapid to accommodate the evolutionary time span of, of millions, even billions of years. And this was written up in a three-part series in Creation Magazine a long time ago. But his, his point was this. Does this mean that the man should now regain his faith? I mean, if, if he does, what, what happens if more information comes later suggesting that the sun isn't shrinking at all? Right. Does, does he then abandon his faith again? I mean, this is the problem people face if evidences alone form the basis of their beliefs. Exactly. I mean, how, how does somebody uh, avoid this, this kind of instability? You know, you're swaying in the breeze. Yeah. So, you know, some educated Christians, despairing of uh, arriving at, a, a, um, at certainty about origins this way, they kind of adopt a Christian agnosticism, we'll say, right? They say, well, you know, um, we can't really know for sure. They almost wear it as a, like, a, like a badge of honor, right? Yeah. You know, we can't know for sure, so we're going to be more uh, intellectual if we just don't pick a, um, you know, we don't be extremist or dogmatic or whatever like that. You know, science is tentative. It's always changing. So who really cares whether God created using creation or evolution? Um, we, we simply won't decide either way, right? Right. And yet, they're, they're, they've missed the point of what creation apologetics is all about, or at least should be. The best starting point for all our thinking in every area cannot be arguments based on our reasoning, which includes very limited knowledge of the world and is always changing. Rather, Christians ought to begin with the revelation, the Word of God itself, which doesn't change and is based on infinite knowledge, the knowledge of God, and then bring reason into the equation. Reason based on revelation produces fruitful research. Yeah, we have to remember that arguments for uh, evolution, long ages, they're continually being modified or discarded. For example, uh, I grew up uh, as a convinced evolutionist. I put my faith in arguments like Piltdown Man, uh, supposed gill slits in, in human embryos, uh, vestigial organs, you know, supposedly leftover organs in, in uh, creatures from their evolutionary past, all which have been proven false. Um, of course, my kids went to school, they, they learned a, a totally new batch of arguments, and they're, they're probably going to get overhauled again in time, uh, you know, for, for, for my grandchildren, etc. Um, so the arguments may change, but the underlying faith or belief system, you know, that, that the world somehow made itself, that doesn't for evolutionists, right? The evidences might change, but they still have a belief that everything made itself. And that's where the real battle is, and, and where the decisions have to be made, at the level of faith and belief. Right. At Creation Ministries, we don't put forward evidences to prove the Bible as though we think human reasoning is a good starting point for determining truth. Right. It isn't, and, and we know that. We do it to show that faith in vital, interconnected truths revealed in Scripture, those truths like creation, the fall, redemption, and the future destiny of believers, for example, is a reasonable faith. It's intellectually satisfying. It's not a blind faith. Right. That's what we're doing. 
for both creationists and evolutionists, there will always be unresolved research challenges, uh, changing arguments, and unanswered riddles. But these things shouldn't affect the stability of a Christian's faith. Right. right. Now, here's an example I like to use to get people thinking. Right. Uh, let me ask you a question. I, I pose this to numerous people. When, when a snake charmer plays his flute, you know, charming the serpent, the, the, the cobra, whatever, does it hear the music or is it just swaying to the movement of the charmer's instrument? Now, the almost unanimous response I've received from people when I ask that question is this. Uh, well, it's just responding to the movements. Snakes can't hear because they don't have ears. Now, was that similar to your answer when I first uh, said it? Obviously, many people have been taught this, judging by the majority of, of similar responses I received. Now, ask yourself, why do they believe that? Yeah, most people believe what they get taught by authority figures. <laughs> right, we right? can't be experts in, in every area. Yeah, presentations, lectures, books, you see things on TV and so on. Yeah. There's experts out there, and there's nothing wrong with that. It, right. it's, it's a necessity, because everyone can't study everything personally, right. as, as you said. <laughs> It's not a matter of accepting authority or not. It's a matter of which authority you accept. Right. Take the, the question about snakes that you, right. that you just posed. Let's say you wanted to verify your answer. Where would you look? Well, you'd likely begin by going online and searching on keywords like snake charming or cobra or something like that. And this might lead to information on the entries of, of, on snake charming and cobra. Under snake charming, you might find, for example, the animal cannot actually hear the tune being played, though it can perhaps feel some sound vibrations as well as those from uh, any tapping by the charmer. Or, or under cobra, we read, the cobras appear to respond to music played by the charmer, but like all snakes, they are deaf and only follow the movements of the charmer. Right. Now, for, for most, that, that would settle it, right? The experts seem to indicate the majority right. is right yeah. that snakes can't hear. Now, now, let's look what the Bible says. We've got uh, Psalm 58, uh, 3 and 4, it says this, The wicked go astray from the womb. They err from their birth, speaking lies. They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like the deaf adder that stops its ear, so that it does not hear the voice of charmers or of the cunning enchanter. Well, here the Bible compares um, the serpent with wicked people, right? Right. Who, yeah. who have the ability to listen, but they deliberately don't want to. So, you know, they stop up their ears like, la, 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 I can't hear you, you know, <laughs> like this. Yeah, but, but this goes against what other sources of information have, have stated. Like, right. Like the, the online sources that we've quoted from and so on. And, and many science journals would seem to back this up as well. Right. Some skeptics have used this passage to show that the Bible isn't scientifically accurate. Right. And some compromising Christians who say that passages, uh, that, that sections of Genesis shouldn't be considered scientifically accurate, have pointed to this very passage right. that it shouldn't be taken literally. Right, the, the Bible shouldn't be taken literally. Right, right. That the Bible shouldn't be taken literally, and, and especially Genesis. Right. So is the Bible wrong here, or, or are the statements elsewhere wrong? Right. Now, some Bible defenders have attempted to say, well, yeah, the Bible says the deaf adder, so it's admitting that snakes are deaf, right? right? Okay. And this is, they're trying to yeah. do this as an apologetic to, to make up for this. But, but for the comparison of a serpent with people to be valid, the snake must have ears and be able to hear, but sometimes stops itself from hearing, right? So it, it, in order to deliberately listen to the charmer, I mean, it would make sense to say, you know, the, the wicked are like snails that deliberately cover their ears to, so they don't have to listen to wise instruction because snails don't have ears. So it, it wouldn't right. make sense. So what the Bible's saying here is that snakes have ears. They have the ability to hear. Well, okay, so it, it, it seems like we've, set up a, a big problem. Right. right. Can science come to the rescue? Do new discoveries about snakes actually confirm the, the biblical record there about that passage? Right. Look at this extract from, this is an article from Torrey Pine State Natural Reserve uh, from their website. Snakes can hear. Uh, can snakes hear, you ask? A few decades ago, the answer was no, for obviously snakes don't have external <laughs> ears. And anyway, snakes don't appear to respond to loud noises. Further support for this view can be found in some current zoology texts, which still report that snakes lack the sense of hearing. But research, begun about 35 years ago, especially the extensive investigations over many years by E.G. Weber and associates at Princeton University, has shown that snakes have hearing capability, at least in an electrophysiological sense, comparable to that of lizards. Right. So look, here we go. So more research has shown that snakes do hear, 
right? They're, they're quadrate bones in, in the jaw, move slightly in response to vibrations yeah. and transmit this to a pair of inner ears. And it's been shown snakes respond to both airborne and ground vibrations. Uh, in, in fact, the auditory responses of snakes uh, are in the range of two to 300 hertz. Uh, it's superior to that of cats. <laughs> and and the, uh, the middle C on a piano is 256 hertz. So, you know, now Christians might think, well, this is great news because, you know, now science has proven the Bible to be true. We can rejoice and, and you know, but there's a danger with this line of reasoning. Sure, yeah. I mean, was the Bible true before science showed that snakes had, have ears that they can hear? Or, or, is, or is the Bible only true because science has proven it right? right. Which has got the most authority? Yeah. To say that science proves the Bible elevates science above Scripture, reason above revelation. Christians should always start from Scripture because the Bible reveals itself as the infallible word of one who cannot lie. It, it can't be wrong. Some Christians find this way of reasoning, of course, too fanatical and, uh, and, and concede that, that one needs to be open-minded about right. the interpretation of Scripture, even when the meaning seems plain, because of what science has shown. But that just gets you right back on your own limited, fallible, very, very incomplete knowledge as the foundation for determining truth. The same kind of reasoning that, that proved snakes can't hear, but then proved that they can. Uh, if history has taught us anything, it's that if we start with the Bible, science, that is our knowledge about the world around us, will catch up. Yeah. I mean, tr trusting man's fallible reasoning over Scripture is what causes many people to compromise the truth of God's Word in Genesis, yes. right? They, yes. they hear these authority figures saying, oh, you can't, you know, this is the way it is, so we can't trust, trust Genesis. But taking the word of scientists that come to different conclusions about what the facts prove in areas such as, uh, you know, the age of the earth, geology, the, the origin of living things, you know, uh, evolution. Uh, this has caused many people to abandon um, the belief in Scripture, faith in Scripture, or to be, you know, able to defend it consistently. I mean, here's an example from someone that responded to an article. Uh, the, the article I did about this, you know, snakes having the, 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 the ability to hear. And uh, M. Pooley uh, from Canada wrote in, uh, and he said, Thank you for this enlightening article. As an open-minded agnostic, I'm always on the lookout for anything ready to persuade my beliefs. Uh, your article really spoke to me as I've read the Bible and remember reading that exact passage and saying to myself, Wait, snakes can't hear. I, I, I know what scientists and lecturers have taught me. Therefore, this passage is evidence that the Bible's false and God doesn't exist. Now, though, after reading your article and learning that snakes do hear, I must go back and reevaluate my beliefs about God, that science should be uh, so audacious as to change its so-called facts in the face of evidence continually frustrates me. I, 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 am I right in thinking that more people would believe in science if it simply picked a story and stuck with it? Thanks again, or should I say I've been one... I've been the one charmed by your delightful article, because I've called the article charmed, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> and, and, and open-minded agnostic yes. and, and an atheist. That's, uh, but, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, but in, a, in a sense, still suffering from what we've said, because they're, they're exactly. saying, well, yeah. you know, whatever science says, then, 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 then maybe I'll believe the Bible, maybe I won't believe the Bible. Right, and you see that there, and in, in you see that frustration come through in, his, uh, in what he wrote into us. Exactly. Now, we, we would do well to consider the strategy that Satan used with Eve right. in saying, did God actually say? Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Actually, <laughs> uh, and, and whatever God says is true, even if every human has a different opinion. Right. God's a majority, a majority of one. <laughs> uh, Satan has used this strategy of causing people to doubt the Word of God from the very beginning. And the results have been disastrous. The Apostle Paul references this when he warned the Corinthians, but I am afraid that as, as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Exactly. So the next time someone says that the, that the Bible can't be trusted, try asking them what they feel can be trusted. Right. Human reason? Like, it, only in a very limited sense. Never lay down your belief in God's Word. Right. Science is great. We, we love science. But it changes all the time. With, with each new discovery, our knowledge about God's creation grows. Right. On, on the other hand, God's Word, His revealed, His, His revelation to us, His revealed Word, never changes. Right. So by starting our thinking there, we're on solid ground. Exactly. As always, for more information, please have a look at the articles we've linked to in the video description below. We'll see you next time.